Guys, I'm not gonna lie, it was so rover, but now we are so back. Hello, YouTube frogs. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about something very important because a lot of people are getting baited into doing the wrong things with their wave plates. Now, if you don't know what wave plates are, uh, because you haven't gotten used to all the terminology in the games yet, a uh, wave plate is your stamina for weathering waves. What I wanna do in this video is tell you exactly how you should be spending your wave plates so that way you don't end up wasting resources farming for things that won't actually be that useful for you in the future because this this is a gacha game your resources are incredibly limited as always you do want to play the game the way that is the most fun for you so if you don't like this advice you don't have to follow it but for those of you guys who are really looking to optimize your resources we need to talk about this this is your stamina. Now, you have a couple different ways that you get stamina. The standard way, and this is basically true in every single gacha game, uh, you wait time. You, you basically wait. You play the waiting game. You go play other games or something. You gain stamina over time. It's about 10 stamina per hour, and so 240 stamina in 24 hours. Now, why do you actually care about stamina? Well, the wave plates that you spend actually do give you more than just resources. The wave plates that you get actually give you XP. So you do want to make sure that you are spending your wave plates that come on a time. Because if you do happen to overcap, then you end up wasting some of that potential XP that's going to help you level up your characters and progress your account. Now, with that said, this is a FOMO mechanic. If you hate FOMO mechanics and you don't care about stamina, that's fine. Again, this is just a way to optimize. The other ways to refill your stamina are by consuming Asteroid, which I do not recommend unless you are a Giga Whale. Uh, if you just, if you like whaling on the game to play it more, then you spend Asteroid. But most people, I don't recommend this because this is your pulling currency. This is what you need to do pulls. The other way is by using Crystal Solvent, and this is going to be a free resource that you can get on occasion from things like events, uh, just in-game rewards for like leveling and stuff. They're pretty limited. You're not able to get a ton of them. And what they do is give you back 60 wave plates instantly. But why should you actually save them? Well, since they give you resources and XP, you would think it makes the most sense to just spend them right away. And I'm here to tell you that that is technically completely wrong and here is why let's go over to yan where we can spend some of our wave plates in a training now if you look at the bottom right there's some different tier rewards these rewards these tiers of rewards actually go up based on your character's union level or your account's union level so when your union level is low you're going to start the game in phase one progress to phase two and i'm currently in phase three at union level 27. now as you can see you get better rewards the higher union level you get which means spending stamina at a higher level ends up getting you more resources overall this applies to everything in the game this applies to your weekly boss fights you're going to be getting more drops from them at a higher level this also applies to tacit fields which are going to be the things that give you echoes and tuners and your bosses as well so like literally everything you get more resources for having a higher level when you go to farm it now what do you actually want to farm well early on in the game there's a couple things that you can avoid the main thing that you actually don't need to do, except for the, the one time you need it for the guidebook, is tacit fields. Now, the reason you don't actually need to do this is because the low-level echoes that you'll get from this aren't actually going to be incredibly helpful for your account. Yes, you may pick up some new echoes this way, but the reason they're not as helpful is because when you're new to the game, you're going to be exploring the world. You're going to be running into tons of echoes everywhere. And those echoes that you find elsewhere, you're going to be able to absorb them without having to spend any of your stamina because you just defeat them in overworld and you find them. When you're early on in the game, you're not getting gold tier echoes, specifically when you're below data bank 15. So because of that, when you do tacit fields at a low level, every single one of these echoes is going to end up getting replaced in a higher level. And the tuners that you're going to be getting aren't going to find themselves a super great use. So tacit fields outside of the, the challenges and the required quests that you got to do and stuff, you don't have to loot these. You don't have to farm these. And in fact, I would avoid farming these. Tacit fields aren't useless forever though. You are going to want to farm them. You just want to wait until you get your data bank to at least level 15 and your union level to at least 30. That way you can unlock gold tier echoes and data merge all of your purple tier echoes into the gold ones if you want to be ultra efficient you can wait till your data bank is even higher level so you have the 50 percent drop rate on the gold echoes but that's up to you just avoid it in the early game this is honestly the only thing you need to avoid because going through the boss challenges simulation challenges forgery challenges uh, it honestly doesn't really matter too much you're gonna need all of these things to progress your characters anyways it's just that echoes you can get without actually having to spend stamina so farming these at a lower level ends up being a bit of a waste. However, when you're early on in the game, your weapon level and your resonator level matter a lot because that's going to be the only thing you're really scaling with, at least until you start getting echoes and leveling them up. So because of that, farming things like weapon XP and resonator XP are totally fine. And this also applies to resonator ascension materials, which you get from bosses and of course the weekly bosses. Now I will say just because we're in week one, if you are one of the players that's able to get to like level 30, I would hold off on farming the weekly bosses until you get there just because they will drop more 
more resources, uh, which means you will be able to get even more value out of them this first week of Weathering Waves launch. And if you're just joining Weathering Waves in week two, same thing applies because this boss thing is going to reset weekly. And if you can manage to get to a high enough level to get the extra bonuses before it resets, that would be great. As you get to Ascension level 20, you can also farm for these guys if you need to. But I will say that you can pick up a lot of these resources in the forgery challenge that you would need to ascend your character and weapons. And I believe these are also used for your skill levels. These you can actually get in this shop that is located in Jinzo. It's going to be the souvenir store. And basically you get the currency for this place just by playing the game. At low level, you need low level resources. So yeah, you could just pick them all up here for these resources up here in the top, the wood textured shards that you get just by exploring the region. Okay, so now that you know which ones of these are worth farming and that tacit fields are only worth farming after you get to data bank 15 and union level 30, I want to talk about your crystal solvent. I've seen tons of people saying, save your crystal solvent, but none of them actually understand the reason why you would save the crystal solvent. Technically speaking, if I were to use all 10 crystal solvent, that would gain me six hundred wave plates let's say i spent all of those on weapon xp that would get me about 15 runs of that zone times 300 which is the amount of xp i'd get and i'd get 4500 xp now if you check my level right now it takes 3200 to level up and i am union level 28 as of making this video and, and by the time it's done i'm probably like 33 or 34 or something but that's a pretty decent chunk of xp and it helps you get to a higher union level faster and realistically it doesn't actually change your speed of progression whether or not you save them or use them the reason is because the rate at which you gain wave plates never changes so if i use all 10 of these right now it's a boost to my xp and i'll spend these wave plates the one i'm gaming gaining over time on the higher level runs or i could save these for the high level runs it would take me a longer time to get to the higher level but then i would have a quick burst of wave plates to use at the higher level Either way, the time amount it takes to get to the higher level and get that amount of resources is going to be the same, whether or not you use Crystal Solvent early or whether or not you use it late. But here's the real reason you would save it. As of right now, wave plates are not the only way to gain XP in Weathering Waves. There are tons of ways to gain XP, uh, such as side quests, for example. If you go through side quests, uh, like GN side quest, his story quest, that's 2,000 union XP. That's almost a whole level. Some other side quests, which I've, I've cleaned out a lot of them. Some other side quests, 150, 250, 20, 20, 500, 150. There's tons of ways to get XP. And on top of that, you also have the guidebook, which also gives you even more XP. So 100 per challenge. You have your dailies and you have GN general exploration around the map you can go collect every single teleport you can go pick mints you can go collect chests and things like that and doing those things are all going to gain you a ton of xp so when do you actually use your wave plates well it really depends on how much fun you want to have with it whether or not you are okay with a slow burn farming your things daily or if you want a burst of gameplay for like a couple hours because whether or not you use them now or later doesn't actually make a difference in the amount of time it takes you to get those resources but what does make a difference is the xp you can get with out wave plates so mathematically the best time to use wave plates and use specifically your crystal solvent is after you have done everything you can to max out xp in the game that is not locked to a daily timer once i have beaten all of the quests that are a large source of xp and i've explored most of the world any time after that i can use all my wave plates let's say i do all of the exploration in the game and all of the side quests let's say it brings me to 35 right once i'm level 35 and i have no other ways of getting extra xp or let the, not even no other ways let's just say i have not a ton of ways to get a ton of xp that is the point at which it does not matter when you use your crystal solvent because you can use it all now to try to get to a higher level faster and then farm out the higher level resources or you can save them take a long time to get to the higher level resources and then burst them all and either way it's going to be the same window of time as long as you've made sure to collect as much of the regular overworld not time gated xp as possible you don't have to wait until union level 40 you don't have to wait till union level 50 you don't have to wait until you get to level 15 data bank all you have to do is make sure that you've exhausted most of the xp that is is not time gated and as soon as that's done if you want to spend all of your crystal solvent that way you will already be as high of a level as you can be without the time gate and that will ensure that you get the most resources out of your crystal solvent so to reiterate as long as you have made sure to get to as high of a level as possible without the time gated wave plates you can spend the wave plates whenever you want and it makes 
absolutely no difference. If you want to get to a higher level faster, you do all of the regular not time gated content, then spend all your wave plates right away. That'll get you up to as high level as you can possibly be. And then it's just daily quests. Alternatively, it's just daily quests. And then once you get to that higher level, then you can spend them all at once. It makes absolutely no difference in the amount of time once you've already run out of the things that allow you to level up without the use of wave plates. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I know a lot of people have been saying, no, save your wave plates till 40, save your wave plates till uh, you get to like data make 18. It doesn't matter. The amount of time it takes you to get the amount of resources that you would be going for is ultimately going to stay the same as long as you've already cleared out all these quests. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. Ultimately, the most important thing is to just have fun with the game. So if this guide was useful and if you learned something, make sure to like the video below. Consider subscribing for more WooWall content. I'll catch you guys next time.